What's up, y'all? That is a tune called The Humors of Tulla. It's a great standard session tune, and it, it came to mind... It came to mind now because I was going through my video alerts, and there was an old session video that was getting a lot of traffic, and I wasn't, I'm still not really sure why, but it was a, kind of a cool blast in, from the past on some, some good standard session tunes, and this was the last one on the set, if I'm not mistaken, and I had not done a video on it. It's also a little tricky. It's a little weird on the flute and the whistle because you're kind of bouncing between that upper octave and the lower octave, but let's break it down. We'll start with the basic melody, as we always do, come back in and add the ornaments and variations and all that sort of stuff. So here's the A part. first half, we'll finish up with the second half here. And then that section would repeat. I'll run the whole A part twice through just to give you a good chance to kind of mess about with it, see if you can pick up the whole thing. So here we go again, nice and slow. Now, as we jump into the B part, it's going to stay in that upper octave, as so often the tunes do. We've got a bit of a start with the F sharp. We finished on the G from the A part, so now we're going to carry on with the F sharp. That's the first half. Hopefully your ears aren't ringing too badly. A lot of notes in the upper octave. Here's the second half. second half of the A part, or excuse me, the second half of the B part finishes the same way as the second half of the A part. So hopefully that makes it a little bit easier. Play the whole B part all the way through so you get, get a chance to play along just like we did, and then we'll carry on with ornaments and kind of fun stuff. So here we go with the B part. and then back around to the A part for the next time through the tune. Hopefully you're able to pick up on that good basic melody. There's a lot of repetition in the B part, and I imagine if you're, if you're kind of thinking ahead, you're thinking rolls, thinking cuts, thinking stuff that we can do, and we will get to that. So let's start with the A part, though, ornaments on that. Refresher on the melody. Now that bouncing back and forth, I referenced that in the beginning. That's kind of the tricky part to this tune. This jumping, it, between that high D and the lower octave, it's something that trips up a lot of folks. If that's the case, this is one of those tunes to play nice and slowly and make sure you get good, clean transitions between those two notes before you start piling on ornaments and, and making it more difficult. But assuming you're getting comfortable with that transition, here's a couple of things that you could do. The first note stays on that high D. Now, you may have noticed when I was playing, I was doing crans. That uh, can be a little tricky at first, but it's one of those that I think will just sort of fall out of the instrument if you, if you try it a little bit. Otherwise, a simple cut on that D works just fine. I really don't do much ornamentation on those other notes, mostly because that, that jumping back and forth is tricky enough. You could do some, some taps and you could land on it slides and things like that if you were so inclined. Again, I don't usually bother with it too much, particularly because the crans, I think, are, are effective. I think they sound kind of cool. Uh, I will cut that high note. That's sort of a maybe a crutch that I like to use. When I hit the highest note in the phrase, I tend to cut it just to accent it a little bit.
as I jump up the scale, that little run, I always do a triplet there. It's fairly essential, I think, to the melody. But if you do that rhythmic triplet that I did in a video a couple of videos ago, I'll link that up here if you want to check it out, it's a, a cool little trick that uh, I think pops that phrase out a little bit. And then a short roll to land on the high, now the new highest note, the high G. And then back around. That's what I like to do with the A part. The B part, I mentioned there's a lot of long held notes, F sharps in this case. A couple of rolls, you could do a couple of cuts, or if you wanted to get fancy, you could do a triple roll, which is what I like to do. Uh, the triple roll then, in my case, the way that I'm doing it is the top finger, the ring finger, and then a tap. And if you, if you tongue the note right before it, it, I don't know, it makes that, that, um, that roll really stand out a lot more, I think. Short roll on the G, as I did before in the first part of the, or the end of the A part. Again, that triplet to the short roll on the G. Oh, walking down that phrase to finish up the, to the, the turn from, from the B part back to the A part. I like to cut both of those notes. Those kind of descending phrases always just shout that out to me. One of those things I just like doing. See if you'd like it or not. Knock yourself out. Now, here's a little bit of a cheat mode. Uh, lazy mode, maybe, or possibly artistic license, depending on how you want to look at it. The A part is tricky. Tends to get a little bit cluttered like that, especially if you're playing it up-tempo, and this tune is one of those kind of famous end-of-the-night tunes that are usually played at Mach 3, so it, it can get a little sloppy. Uh, so this move, tricky to get clean. What you can do is the lazy, cheat, artistic license mode. Now you can just sit on that note a little bit, and then do a little sort of a cut off of the B, rather than simulating that, that sort of bouncy effect. if you want to, and even if you are comfortable playing it the quote-unquote right way with the, the bouncy part, it's still kind of fun to throw in there as a variation, I think, anyway. Let me know what y'all think of this tune. Good standard one that everybody kind of needs to know if you're playing in sessions, if that's your goal. And if not, it's just fun. I'll see y'all in the next one, guys. Cheers.